When I first got my new Macro Pro, it took me a while to get the hang of all its features, but eventually I figured out the most important settings to change, useful tips and hotkeys that I wish I knew earlier. So if you recently got your new Macro Pro M1, M2 or M2 Max, this video is for you. So let's get started! The first thing I always do when setting up a new MacBook is make sure it's up to date. I go to system settings in the Apple menu, then click on general, then click on software update to update my software. Next, I log in with my Apple ID if I haven't already and then go to my profile in iCloud. I make sure that iCloud drive is turned off because I don't want to sync all the stuff I have on other Apple devices and take up all the space on my MacBook. If you want to store files from certain apps in iCloud, you can turn on that option so that you can access them on any device where you're signed in with your Apple ID. After that, I like to start customizing the appearance of my MacBook to make it my own. To do this, I go to system settings, then click on appearance. I prefer dark appearance, but you can also choose an automatic setting that changes throughout the day. Next, I like to change the accent color for menus, buttons, and active form fields, as well as the highlight color for when I click and drag my mouse over certain words or items. I always choose to show the scroll bar so I have more control over scrolling through my content. And of course, I change the wallpaper to something that suits my style. One more thing I like to do is change my computer name. I go to general, then click on about and type in my name. And don't forget to change your profile picture too. Just go to users and groups and click on your profile picture. You'll see a bunch of options to choose from. So pick the one that suits you best. When I get a new MacBook, there are a few general settings that I always change first. In system preferences, I go to general, then storage and turn on the option to automatically empty trash that's been there for more than 30 days. Next, I make sure the handoff feature is allowed and turned on in AirDrop and Handoff. So I can copy text or pictures from my iPad or iPhone and paste them directly into my MacBook Pro or vice versa. Another general setting that I like to customize is changing my default web browser in desktop and dock, windows and apps. I prefer to use Google Chrome as I find it more comfortable, especially when working with multiple accounts. Additionally, setting up hot corners in desktop and dock can save me a lot of time. I click on hot corners at the bottom of the screen and select the actions I want to see when I move the pointer to screen corners. It's important to keep your MacBook Pro secure and adding multiple fingerprints to Touch ID is a great way to do that. To add a new fingerprint, select Touch ID and Password and click on the plus button to add another fingerprint. Another great tip to save time is to set your preferred application to open certain file types. You can do this by right clicking on a file, selecting Get Info and then choosing your preferred application to open that file type. You can also hold down the option key when clicking on a file to reveal more hidden options. If you want to easily view all your open apps on a Mac, just use the hotkey command tab. Then you can navigate through them by hitting the tab key and choose whichever app you want. It's really simple. When it comes to organizing files on my desktop, I love using stacks. Just right click on the desktop and choose use stacks. This will organize all your files and keep everything tidy and easy to find. It's important to have a good relationship with Finder. So the first thing I do is go to view and choose to show the path and status bar. This way I always know where I am in my folders and how much space is available. Next, I choose to show my most used folder, which for me is my YouTube channel files and videos. I also remove all the tags from the sidebar since I don't use them at the moment. Then I like to clean up the sidebar in Finder by removing the items I don't use and keeping the ones I always use. Then I check these two options, keep my folders on top when sorting by name and search only in the current folder. This way, when I'm sorting my files, the folders are always on top 
and I can easily search for files in the current folder without searching my entire MacBook. I always right click on the toolbar and select customize to add buttons for quick access to actions like creating new folders or deleting them with the trash icon. And if there are any unwanted icons on the toolbar, I simply press and hold the command key and then drag the item out of the toolbar to remove it. I also like to go to the view options and turn on snap to grid for a better experience when moving folders and files. One of my top priorities is setting up the dock and menu bar. It just makes everything so much easier to navigate. First, I go to desktop and dock and make the dock smaller so it takes up less space. Then I turn on the magnification and put it on medium. I like to keep the dock at the bottom and I prefer the genie effect but if you are a windows lover, you can change it to scale. I also like to double click on a windows title bar to zoom and I turn on the button that minimizes windows into their own application icon instead of creating a new space in the dock. This keeps things clean and tidy. If you like your dock to automatically hide and show, you can turn that on too. I don't want recently opened apps to show in the dock since I only want my most used apps there, so I turn that feature off. Customizing the dock is easy. Just drag the line to adjust its size or hold down shift and drag the line to change its position. Finally, I like to add my most use apps to the dock so simply right click on the app and select keeping dock to add it or drag it to the middle of the screen and drop it to remove it when i'm using an app in full screen mode i don't like the menu bar to disappear since i need all the buttons up there for that app so to fix that i go to desktop and dock settings and in the menu bar section i change the option for automatically hide and show the menu bar to never this way the menu bar will always be visible even when I'm using an app in full screen mode. To keep my screen clean and clutter free, I always customize the control center and remove any unnecessary buttons from the menu bar. So in system preferences control center, I would start adding frequently used buttons such as the battery icon with the percentage displayed to the menu bar and removing extras like Spotlight Search and Siri since I don't use them all the time from the menu bar. If I need to access any icons from the control center, I can simply drag and drop them onto the menu bar. Next, I love using the new feature called Stage Manager, which organizes my recent windows into a single strip on the left-hand side of the desktop. This allows me to see multiple windows in a single view and switch between them more easily. I use the hotkey Command W to close an app. When I want to quit an app completely, I hit Command Q. If an app stops responding, I hold down Command Option Escape to force quit the app. Another hotkey that I use a lot is command space to bring up the spotlight search which is a powerful search assistant that can search everything on your Mac including web pages, notes and documents. Also for example if you search something and click on that and hit spacebar it will show you the preview of that file without opening that. Also when you hit delete on a Mac it won't do anything so you should press command delete to delete the selected file. For taking screenshots on a Mac, I use a few different hotkeys. If I want to take a screenshot of the whole window, I press Command Shift 3. If I only want to take a screenshot of a portion of my desktop, I press Command Shift 4. And if I want to see all the screenshot options available, including screen recording, I press Command Shift 5 and choose the option that fits my needs. It's super convenient. One thing I like to do to make my MacBook more user-friendly is to customize my keyboard settings. First off, I change the settings so that the globe button shows emojis. Then I always set up a second language for my keyboards. This can be done through the language and region settings or through text input. I just hit the plus button and search for my second language. Once it's set up, I can switch between languages from the menu bar on the desktop. To save more space on my menu bar, I turn off the input button. You can also turn on the use caps lock button, which allows you to switch between languages with a single key. 
If you hold down the caps lock button for a few seconds until the light turns green, you can type in all uppercase. I can also customize my hotkeys by double clicking and setting a new one. Finally, I turn on keyboard navigation so that I can easily tap through different options and navigate my MacBook more easily. When I connect my magic mouse to my MacBook, I always go to the mouse options and increase the tracking speed because it's usually too slow at first. Then I change the secondary click option to the right side so I can easily right click on objects on the screen using the right side of the mouse. To make navigating faster and easier, I like to adjust my trackpad settings. First, I increase the tracking speed in the point and click section. Then I make sure that force click is turned on, which allows me to preview files when I press firmly on the trackpad. I also like to enable secondary click or right click when I tap or click with two fingers. Another setting I like to enable is tap to click, which allows me to perform a click by simply tapping the trackpad. Pad. Then in the scroll and zoom section, I make sure all the buttons are turned on so that I can move the contents in the same direction as my fingers. For example, I can pinch two fingers together to zoom out or spread them apart to zoom in. And if I want to zoom in on something quickly, I just double tap with two fingers for smart zoom. Using gestures on your Mac can seriously speed up your workflow. For example, instead of clicking buttons to navigate through the document or web browser, you can simply scroll left or right with two fingers. And if you want to move between different full screen apps, just sweep left or right with three fingers. Keeping the notification center on means you can easily check your notifications and widgets by sweeping left from the right edge of the trackpad. And if you swipe up with three fingers, you can access mission control to see all your open apps and quickly switch between them. I personally love using the pinch gesture with my thumb and three fingers to bring up the launch pad. For a smoother navigation experience, I would go to accessibility and then go to trackpad options and turn on dragging so you can move windows or files around with ease so these are the initial settings i changed when i get a new macbook i'll be back with more tips in my next video see you soon